you can actually see this. There you go. So 1-1, one, one, we have game three. It is Arabia. And this is going to be very interesting. I think Poland has the advantage here. I could be wrong, though. On the left-hand side, we have Remy. And he's playing as the Mayans. Fantastic zip. I freaking love Mayans. In the pocket, in the gray, it's DZ playing as Mongols. The other pocket is Teal playing as Hunt. And then the other flank we're looking at then is Persian. So great team game Civ. Well, great team game Civs for all those players there. We have Mongols then on this flank as El Quark. Pocket is Tiger playing as Mayans. In the pink, we have Shmoof playing as Spanish, who finally gets the pocket position. And then the last player is Philip playing as Huns. So in quick review, it's Huns versus Mayans on this left side between Philip and um, Remy. And then at the top side, it's Mongols versus Persians. Honestly, I can see how Mongols and Huns can have an advantage. So maybe BF has an advantage in the early game here, but... The thing is, is Mayans, if they can win, like the Drush, if they can set up their economy well, they usually have a very strong advantage, and that Drush is pretty strong. So I think it depends on how well Remy plays Mayans. Meanwhile, on this side, of course, Persians are very good, but I think Mongols can do some damage in the early game with the scouts. We'll have to see. Speaking of which, actually, it looks like, look at this from DZ. He's doing the right thing, and he's going across, and he is laming the Mongols player and stealing two sheep as well, which is really, really nice. I don't think that Quark is even aware of this, as the boar is now being warred back. And uncontested, I think that DZ is going to be able to take this. That's just, just a really, really quick lame from him. Going to be able to bring this back. But keep in mind, it actually looks like Quark is looking to do the same. And there's two boars right here. Long was, of course, pretty known for doing that. Back on this side... We have Huns and we have Mayans. We could easily see this Mayan Eagle go for a boar. Don't know how close he is. It looks like this boar was lured a long distance. Gonna be brought back. I just want to make sure it wasn't the pocket he lames. Yeah, okay, it was the flank. They're kind of, if you look at the positioning from Tiger and from Quark, they're quite close to one another. But the scout's being brought back now and Quark has yet to scout this area. He actually ran right by it. But he probably will find it. Let's be honest, he's going to find it before both of them are brought in. Unless Yellow chooses to do something fast here and just send out two bills and bring them in. I also want to see if Quark is aware. Actually, okay, I thought we had a lame on this side, but certainly sheep stealing, which is good enough. I want to see if Quark is aware of what's going on. He scouted the TC. I don't know why he's not going this way. That would be the rational thing to do is go this way. But he's actually chasing the scout of yellow. And oh man, he might just miss out on this boar. Back at home, I'm pretty sure he's... Well, he might be thinking his boar is here. He might be thinking it's in one of those positions. I'm still just paying attention to lames. And look at this. BF is now laming. And that's a really wise move, like I said, to just get that lame if you can. Lion's going to be stuck with one boar. Two additional sheep. But he has to make sure he can get this back. He should be able to. Shmoof is actually here. He's gonna, he's gonna help out a little bit if need be. Just make sure that this boar is not taken. Oh gosh, don't block it, Shmoof. <laughs> Very close to it. But really good that Shmoof is here so we can attack this eagle. I think that boar is gonna be brought back now. Meanwhile, on this side, we have a laming fest. Elkork finally finds the boar. And he is going to be very close. Both scouts are on low HP. It's kind of hard to lame with the scout when there's some in, there's an intruder in between the scout and the boar. So we going to be interested to see if... Oh, he did block it. He did block it. The boar did not do him any favors. And look at this. Tiger's actually here. And there was an X. And now Tiger's going to pick it up. It's like a uh, relay race here with the boar. And he's going to try and take it now. I think both scouts will survive. I mean, look! <laughs> How many are going to see? This is too much for me. Now DZ is running away. Uh, and he's going to lame this boar. How many lames have we seen? Somebody go back and count it. <laughs> and, uh, oh man, he's, it looks like uh, Tiger is going to be able to take this back. But uh, DZ is going to try and stop it last second. And he might be able to. Oh man, I think he might just do it. This is crazy. Uh, now, 
it looks like the board's gonna go back. I'm trying to pay attention to the other boards, but I'm kind of just laughing too much. <laughs> and uh, it looks like, yeah, this board is gonna go back. Honestly, at this point, I don't even know who has a board and who doesn't. <laughs> this is just, this is just too crazy. Um, <laughs> that's exactly what John just said in the chat. Like we have pockets luring boards to flanks now, and <laughs> okay. Whew. Whew, deep breaths, T90. Deep breaths. Let's try and rebound from this. Like, how do you even set your economy up behind that? Like, uh, uh, crazy. It looks like just looking at this side. <laughs> uh, two boars in total for Remy. Uh, two boars in total, yes, for Philip. And over here, two boar, two boars in total for a Quark. And I guess two for DZ, but all of that action, man, all of that action, just for everybody to end up with two boars. <laughs> oh man, that was that was funny though. I will say that. Uh, Drush now coming in from Philip, and he's gonna run towards Remy. And you know, Remy ideally would have drushed or something, but I think he's gonna go one range now after all of that. Someone needs to highlight that. Well, of course it will be highlighted, but Rush coming in now from DZ. And he's gonna try and go against El Quark. And I think El Quark's gonna be going for man at arms or now he's going right to a range. And uh, he's probably he's very close to losing that scout. Oh, the nice wall there from Quark around the gold. He did lose the scout, but is it, it's worth it if you can get this villain side. Oh man, he's just really risked an awful lot there just to get that walled off. That village is very close to going down. I'm surprised actually he was able to wall it off in the end. Drush now coming in from Philip. And um, there is the range from Remy. I don't think the Drush is going to do too much. This is pretty good walling. And that scout's just going down. So Philip has lost his scout. That Drush is not going to be able to go in towards his town center. Might think about it though. And the Drush, meanwhile, on this side from DZ not doing too much. I don't think the flanks are going to be able to Drush FC. I'm just going to be honest on that one. But, oh, that village is very close. In the end, good micro from Melquark to kill a militia and now be able to run away with that villager. The two ranges from him. Meanwhile, I assumed we were going to see Drush into archers as well from DZ. So we'll have to pay attention to that. And we're probably going to see archers on this side as well from Philip who, um, well, he's walling an awful lot because he's way behind in the uptime. And I guess that makes sense. Keep in mind, some of the Castle Age players were involved in the laming fiasco, so their castle times might be a little bit off. Pretty good for Elquark to go back there to those deer. But he might be spotted there by Teal, and Teal's going to just go over there with his scout. See what's going on. I don't think Remy's going to be over fast enough to get through these walls. So if the walls are up, he's probably going to run immediately to the pocket. And the pocket's already walling. So maybe Remy needs to scout this out a little bit and focus on his economy. But look at the, looking at the Castle Age times, Poland's well ahead. Well ahead with those Castle Age times. I mean... Here we have DZ. He's done a great job. Of course, his Mongols. I think the militia are going to go down now. Almost killing an archer, actually. But yeah, luckily Tiger is up. But what about what about Schmoof? Actually, what about Schmoof? Um, yeah, I was like, oh, is he slinging? He's that late? Nope, he's not. And again, I didn't mean to jinx him, but I feel like Schmoof is, though he may be the calm voice of reason in the chat according to j squared his castle age time is really behind He's going two stables though so maybe he can pull it back i just don't think he will be like philip the flank who engaged in all the laming and things like that is up around the same time oh look at this that that weak villager there it's gonna be very close to going down Oh man, what? I, I have to say that DZ, this pocket player, Mongols, he's been fantastic. He's helped out with the laming. Now he's going and picking off a vill. Archers are now here from Remy, which is great. On the other side, Archers, well, not yet going in from Quark, so not much going on. If I were Remy, I would continue to focus on this area, just be annoying. 
And he has an eagle down here. Just just be annoying. Boss the walls behind. And that's pretty much what he's done here. But once crossbows come in, he's going to be able to fire over top of this wood line. And this wood line as well, if Philip has to relocate to it. But Philip is Hun, so he's probably going to be holding out for just cab archers here. And Schmoof is going to lose that villager. Guaranteed. That villager is not going to be able to complete that wall because the wolves. And I am preparing the woo woo woo. Uh, the woo woo hockey is memorized at this point. So, uh, so two stables then from Teal. He's going to be going with knights now. And same goes with Tiger. It looks like they're, they're signaling because they're trying to get some team walls up. But that kind of indicates now that BF might not be too confident. Uh, Schmoof. He's trying to wall this area off. I'll have to see if he can do that. It looks like he's actually made a hole in this wall. And crossbows will come in for Remy when he clicks up. But Remy's still not... He still hasn't clicked up. So he's not doing too hot here. But he has a lot of archers with fletching. He might be able to go through. And I think he will go through here. Huns can't build houses. So they're going to have to build a building behind to, to uh, block it off. And all oh, that villager very close to going down. You know what? He might just survive. And get that up. He might not run into that other wolf. First of the commentator. But here we have DZ showing up with Remy, with the knights. And immediately a tower from Philip on the gold. But Schmoof is he's in the castle age now. We'll see where he sends his knights. He's going to need to get them over. He's going with the TC. And the, the villager just survives. Pretty funny. They might get the team all up, and obviously mine's going to be going for a castle as the pocket, so I think the plumed archers might be able to turn this around for them. It actually looks like knights already here from Teal, picking off one villager and breaking in as well with DZ on this side, so the other DZ. And, you know, we're going to have five knights. This is going to be really bad for Orange. He has to abandon this, and he has to run. Plumed archers take some time to build up, and there's not many of them here yet. It looks like Smoof has helped out a bit. He's he's come over, and he has a lot of knights. So credit to him for that. And they're gonna still have to deal with the pressure here. I think the big thing is that they didn't want Remy to lose his crossbows. I wonder if he's on stone. He's actually not. That's interesting. So the mines player is not gonna have a castle on this side. But having to relocate to this wood line is pretty sketchy. It's gonna be really difficult. Huge mess. And. Now, actually, DZ on this side, the Persians player in the yellow, he's clicked up ahead of El Quark. But we'll see how many crossbows Philip choose to go with. He's still making crossbows, and I assumed he would go with cab archers now, but he knows he can't match up to the range, I think, once Blue ends up getting his upgrades. But now on this side, Remy has, he has clicked up to Castle Age. Still, it looks like they're... Trying to hold to this hill, and to be honest, they've done a good job. Like, Yellow's getting in, but after relocating the Lumber Camp, a lot of damage hasn't really been sustained. As I say that, one villager goes down, but still quite good. Bloomed Archers are now here. They do a plus two, so that's a good situation for them. And, oh, they could do decent damage to Remy. He's actually picked off a villager on the range that's so going to be stopping that range. Could block this other one in. Yep, going to get one more. And now a tower from Remy, and... I think Remy's just trying to play it safe now. He needs to wall up behind here because that is not... That's open. And maybe he's hoping the tower would do everything, but I think the knights will do a lot. He'll open on the back. This is the engagement we're looking at on this side with the plumed archers, the archers, the knights. There's going to be a lot of crossbows here from yellow shortly. They really need more plumed archers here. But this is not a good situation. It looks like DZ's now coming over to help out. One thing I noticed is that DZ is doing quite well with his economy, but he needs to, I think, get some upgrades here. Send some more knights. Oh, look at this. He's going to try to wall them in. No, he's just relocating them to this side of the wood line. And those crossbows could be in range of these villagers. It looks like the knights are now coming around, but how many we're going to see go down? Phil's now running away. Looks like we're not going to see any go down, but they'll have the hill. The archer's not coming over from Remy, which is good. Pretty interesting fights on both sides, been paying attention to. Uh, Crossbow's now fighting uphill against the Plume Darts with plus two, and the Knights aren't involved, so that's actually a pretty bad fight for Yellow to take, but the Knights are now coming around from behind. Orange is, is struggling, definitely, though. I mean, El Quark is not having a good time here. He still hasn't clicked to the Castle Age. 
it does look like the health from DZ was huge on this side of his Mongols. He did get the defense upgrade, which is helpful as well. And he will clear all of this up. And now there's a lot of buying crossbows. Gonna get ballistics as well. Gonna push over towards Philip. But is he going with the cav archers? No, he's staying with the crossbows. And that's the only thing I can think of that justifies that is the range. And the uh, plumed archers and the crossbows are so cheap for Mayan, so I think that he's just doing it because of the added range you can get from crossbows. But now Quark is in a bad situation. He needs more gold to be able to click up. Everybody else is in the Castle Age now, so that's not good for the BF team. And consistently throughout these games, it just seems like Poland's a little bit better as a team. Like, there have been some players for Black Forest, which are stronger, like, individuals in certain stages, but it is obvious to me now that Poland is stronger as a whole team than DZ's team, uh, than, uh, sorry, BF's team. Well, what I was getting ahead of myself, DZ's pushing it with Knights now, he's plus two defense, too, but he's transitioning to Knights, which is an interesting move, it looks like Teal's actually here. Uh, jump in with his knights, but the reason I think it's a nice move is because Persian knights get plus two attack versus archers, so you know, all knights here are really going to be good. Persians are involved. The plus two defense, no bloodlines yet, and also notice that Teal also has plus two defense, no bloodlines. Alright, well, attack the weak one. Attack the weak one. I gotta go, of course, to the woman. But that would have been fun to see. Crossbow's pushing across from Remy, and this is a real worry for Philip. I feel like he needs a siege workshop. He has it now. Because look at all the units about to come through. Crossbow's will just take out that wall, even though they could have ran through this way. And we'll see how well Schmoof is able to help out, because he hasn't been helping out. Uh, there are his knights. He's going to send them in, but he's behind on upgrades. Chain Barding coming a little bit earlier for Teal, or for uh, DZ here, which isn't a huge deal, I guess. It's a big Maganel shot, just depending on how Remy runs his units. Oh, Shmoof, this is bad for you. You gotta go away. One night left to die. But, good thing he did go back in that situation. This is really where all the action's unfolding. It looks like the Knights are still coming in, and this is gonna be really hard to stop. Persian Knights, and also Teal had Knights over here at some point. Again, it looks like Oh, Quark is forced to relocate. Luckily, he's going to hit the castle age. A lot of plumed archers, though. They should be able to deal out some damage to these knights. Especially if Ballistics is in, which I'm not sure about just yet. But here we go. Just look at this. Remy does have Ballistics on these crossbows. Ridiculous. Just going to shred smooth. Or smooth. Shred smooth. <laughs> oh, man. Um, and now Teal's in again. And, you know, Teal hasn't... We haven't seen a lot of Teal's units, but... Just look at Elkark's economy, 32 villagers and 10 idle. Constantly getting raided, and I think he will get raided more. Look at this, he's just building town centers where he can, and oh man, he's going to lose more villagers if he doesn't pay attention. Oh, it's not going to be successful here. Oh man, is he even going to get the town center up? There's so many knights there, he's not going to get the town center up, and oh man, it goes from bad to worse. Meanwhile, Shmoof is, he was unable to deal with Remy and... I believe Thumbring is coming at this point because these crossbows are firing pretty fast. But, ooh, look at this. Schmoof is here now with Phillips. This could be an interesting fight. I'm comparing knight upgrades. It looks like it's similar. Oh, this is a pretty even fight. Of course, Plume Archers could come over from red as well. Pretty interesting. The Plumes, not here yet from Tiger. And there's more knights now from DZ. So I think that we're going to see some micro from Phillips. But in retreat. He's going to need to retreat, but this is a bad, this is a bad area. Quark offers nothing to his team right now, with the Knights continuing to raid his base. And that's going to be really bad, I think, for Red, who's actually in the Imperial Age now on 77 villagers, which is a pretty good time for him. But his allies are sustaining a lot of, a lot of damage. I wonder what we're going to see from the other mind player, Remy, who, at this point, I'm going to switch to his point of view and watch the fight. He's not anywhere close clicking up to Imp, but he does have a lot of crossbows. Now, Knight's continuing to run in and try and raid Red. He is kind of exposed here to Knight raiding, but you know he's going to mass the Plumed Archers and probably stick with them in the Imperial Age. So hopefully for him, he's going to have a little bit of, 
time to be able to get another castle up, but look at all the bills still going down. They're just doing the right thing and sending everything to the mine player, and he's definitely losing villagers. He's below 70 now. It looks like the crossbow's coming in now on this wood line at the same time to Philip, and there's the GG. I think they just, they just knew. I mean, collectively as a team, they're just not good enough, and I actually think I'm looking at Remy's build count. He's just gone up to that second TC. Just gone up to it because he had like three ranges, all the upgrades, and he had a ton of crossbows too. I mean, four each workshop. That was the play for sure. Uh, what a what a great game. What a great game. I really like the transition from yellow to go into knights then. But obviously, Quark just was pretty much non-existent after the initial raid came in on this wood line. He was just trying to survive.